Weather-wise, it could hardly be called the spring game, but the football team fought the elements and each other in the situational scrimmage on Saturday afternoon. The defense topped the offense 76-46 in a modified scoring system. Head coach Matt Mitchell joins us to look at the highlights and discuss what has accomplished he has accomplished this spring. Uh, coach, thanks for coming in. Uh, Thank you. 40 mile an hour blustery cross winds out there at Lover <laughs> Stadium. Kind of hard to evaluate, guys, but I'm sure you did see a few things that you liked, maybe some things you didn't like. Uh, just give us your overall impressions of the spring game. The, the conditions made it tough to throw the ball, you know, so we had to stick to the ground a little bit. And uh, so it was good to see. I think we had some running backs that showed up um, that had had good springs, but I wanted to see them out there running around. And then we did, we did get some good play out of some of our guys on defense who kind of run around want to hit some people so it was a busy day for us overall we had recruits in in the morning had that spring game in the afternoon then that night we had our fundraiser so a big day for Laker football and the spring game was definitely the the main portion of it final score 76 46 a lot of people are like wow what is this an arena football game talk about this scoring system if you can as we roll the highlights yeah the scoring system has kind of been handed down uh, from Brian on down and it's you just get points based on first downs and stops and tackles for losses so it kind of makes things fair for the offense and defense so Jake Aberg right here uh, is a transfer tailback we had, number 24. He came to us from Minnesota State, Mankato, and uh, he was running around, did some good things in the first half, and then we were really impressed with uh, Hershey Jackson. He's uh, going to be a sophomore next year. He's from a local product, obviously from Allendale. Uh, he had a great spring practice and then kind of highlighted here with this touchdown run, but he ran very well. So I feel good about our tailback depth and our overall the guys we had there back there running the ball, especially kind of with our first tier. I want to ask you about Hershey. I mean, interesting story with this young man. Obviously, uh, he, you know, he, he had a, a ton of offers. And you even said that Brian offered him at Cincinnati when Brian was down there. He blew his Achilles right before his final season at Allendale. He's a hometown kid. I mean, talk about having this guy. Oh, he's been awesome. And, you know, his, it was kind of a, you know, one of those deals where I'm sure he was pretty disappointed when the injury happened, but he came in. We redshirted him. He rehabbed. He played for us a little bit last year, but we were pretty cautious coming off that Achilles injury. And then uh, he's just really turned it on throughout the course of you know January, February, and now into spring practice. So I'm happy for him. He's had a, kind of a rough go, but he's starting to have some success on the field. And uh, this is Billy Seiler, another one of our tailbacks. He's from Illinois, and we, we had a number of younger guys, as you can see. And we have a lot of different types of back. Billy's a little, obviously, a smaller scat back type guy that can catch the ball. And then we had a couple other bigger backs right here is um, Chris Robinson, a, a true freshman from Ovid Elsie, big, big tailback, but very athletic. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Hershey, you know, big tailbacks. And so we've got a really good mixture of some bigger backs that we think can get it north and south. And then some other guys that can go. And then, you know, our, our white shirt defensive line, especially some of the freshman guys, were getting some penetration and doing some good things. So I was excited to kind of see some of these freshmen out there with uh, some full contact making some plays. Uh, one of the big questions, obviously, going into this game was the quarterback position. Uh, kind of elaborate on that. Kind of tough to really evaluate, probably, when you got 40 mile an hour wins. But in your mind, did Heath Parling do enough in this game to be your number one guy when camp opens in August? He definitely has the advantage heading in. I'm not sure we're quite at the point we want to name him the starter, but based on his experience coming out of the season last year and the way he performed throughout all of spring practice, and this was just the last practice, basically, but there's 14 practices before. Heath did a great job. And uh, I feel bad for some of these other guys. Taylor Kopesha and Isaiah Grimes and Brandon Beitzel had also had good spring practice too. It got really tough, Brent, with the ball being so wet and the wind to really showcase some of those guys. So I feel bad for some of the fans that didn't get to see that. But we got enough work in on practice that we kind of know where we're heading at heading into the summer. What about guys on defense, Matt? Talk about some guys that uh, maybe raised your eyebrows a little bit that maybe you didn't expect to, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you didn't expect to really pop out. And there's two defensive linemen I thought did a great job. Denzel Rogers was going to be a sophomore. He was running around. It wasn't maybe necessarily always pretty with his technique, but he definitely had some, some fire and was out there running around. And then another true freshman, Matt Judon. I think those two defensive ends kind of stood out for me, guys that were trying to do what we're coaching, running around, making some plays. So I was pretty excited about that. We had a freshman linebacker, Adam Koning, that – um, we think he's got a chance, and he, and he showed us the spring game. He did some good things, too. So we held out a lot of our top-end guys from the game. It was good to see some of these guys with their, that are coming into their first-year eligibility or coming out of their first-year eligibility go in there and do some things on the defensive side of the ball. And I just liked our aggressiveness, how we were running around hitting, which uh, is going to be you got to have that uh, heading forward in the fall. You still have a couple of guys on the team that played in the national championship game a couple of years ago, so they want to get back there. And I'm, a, I'm betting that those guys are probably going to be a driving force and rallying everybody around uh, this coming fall. Yeah, our, I tell you, our summer program has been a big part of the reason we've had success here the past 10 years. And that is really, 
the leaders of that, and it's driven by our upperclassmen. And I know, we, like you said, we've got a bunch of guys coming back from last year, and we also do have a number of younger guys. So it's going to be important through these summer months that we get great leadership out of some of our players. And we're coming to a point in time where the leadership has come from the coaching staff. Now, like you said, some of these guys that want to achieve some of these goals heading into 2011, they got to start taking charge of this team and taking it over in the months of May, June, and July before camp start up. And I know we have those type of people in our program, and they're excited to get back to work. All right, Matt, thanks. Have a great summer. Okay. All right, thank you. You bet. Next up, head baseball coach Steve Line will talk about his team's big week as they extend their winning streak to 11 games. Thank you.